throwing in some magic mic dancing. Put on the navy uh, hat. Uh -oh. Come on, show the ladies. Let's that... show the ladies some mercy, Malcolm Nance. Uh, that was straight Caddyshack gopher dancing. <laughs> <laughs> All I do is roll my shoulders. <laughs> yeah, I love the navy hat. You tweeted yesterday, my navy is in trouble. I mean, eh. So thank God this guy had to resign. Model, what's his name? Modley. What a jerk! I can't believe he flew how many thousand miles to Guam to call their beloved captain stupid, right? And then he he has to apologize. Let me be clear. I don't think Captain Crozier's naive or stupid. I've always believed him to be the opposite. Well, really, why'd you do that? Just to, for Donald Trump, you threw away your whole uh, honor and career, right? Again, yeah. someone else. Well, you know, I intended to come on here pretty angry, and uh, then. The karma awoke itself, and uh, he flew some 8,000 miles, technically to get fired. Yeah. So that's what happened here. Look, um, you know, you, you all know, old Navy guy, uh, you know, uh, seven generations of military service, mainly Navy. And uh, I took this one very seriously. And, you know, for him to go out there and attack the captain because he looked out for his crew, was disgraceful absolutely disgraceful but he's a trump administration appointee who was in the navy at one point he was a helicopter pilot for a couple of years and then went out opened a hedge fund and became one of trump's top donors and that's how he became assistant secretary of the navy and he became assistant because the the acting secretary acting because he the secretary of the navy resigned rather than bring a war criminal back into the Navy. Thank but you. But this guy had no problem with executing Trump's orders. Right. And, and they and they period. only do the right thing when it's a PR problem, Malcolm, when it, they get Absolutely. shamed into it, when they see not only is this captain gets this hero's farewell from his sailors, he gets coronavirus himself trying to protect his his ship. And they see like, oh, this looks bad now. And he just went and called him stupid. It's, I mean, it's just it's, it's just a mess, like everything else in the Trump administration. All I know is this. I'm glad that I took part. I actually started the hashtag resign Modley, Modley yeah. and was one of the first people to say, if you have the slightest bit of, of honor, you will resign for the things that you said. I was also one of the first people to hear that audio recording when it was mailed out. And believe me. When that sailor yelled WTF? Yeah, we're all WTF sailor. <laughs> we are all the WTF guy, right? I mean, uh, but you know, when the, the 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 stress came hot and heavy because people were watching our Twitter feeds, people were hearing what we were saying on radio, on television. I did many interviews, and it, you know, it wasn't me; it was all of us, and that pressure caused Congress and the Armed Forces Services Committee to lose confidence in him and started calling for his resignation. And believe me, 20, uh, yesterday, I think it was around 2 p.m. Eastern time, Nancy Pelosi tweeted she wanted him to resign. Yeah. And he resigned within 45 minutes. Yeah, well, we got to get that going for Trump because I, seriously. Yeah. Um, you see, so your two areas of expertise, the Navy, intelligence, um, House Intelligence Chair Adam Schiff, who we just had on, um, said, um, what do you call it? Uh, it accused, accused, um, Grinnell. Yes, of undermining a, a critical intelligence functions by keeping Congress in the dark about organizational changes he's been implement, implementing. Uh, Schiff emphasized that under Grinnell's management, every Senate appointed official in the DNI's hierarchy has been removed. So he's just removed the guy in charge of the right overseeing the $2 trillion stimulus. Michael Atkinson right. in the Friday night news dump. Um, right. I, I, right. It just, all of it. Yeah. Haul him in. Haul him in. I mean, there's a resolution. There's a way to do this. They hate sunlight. Grinnell is a hack. OK. And, uh, you know, a, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he a log cabin Republican? Yes. Right. Yes, he is. Yes. Yeah. He's 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 one of the few out gays who who went to Europe, went to Germany and was spouting orders to the German government to the point where they wanted to remove his credentials. I mean, that is disgraceful. No, when another country removes your dis credentials as a diplomat, you have done it. So he managed to get that. Now Trump has put him in as a loyalist to gut the intelligence community. Here's the kicker. You can't do that. Because for every one of the senior executive service that you have out there, you just create another slot. So next January, when the new administration comes in 
and it's not the Trump administration, what he has done is he has set himself up for prison. Well, because when you pull these people out, you're yeah. violating laws. And we should not allow, if Glenn Kirshner is the attorney general. Oh, we should, thank you, Jesus. Please, baby Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah. We should not allow any of this to be gotten no, away with. No, no. These people need to go to prison. They go to prison for coronavirus malfeasance, for criminal negligence. And you know. Gutting the intelligence community to what purpose? Who's paying them? What's the what's the interest they're getting out of that? And you know all the intelligence officials that warned him in, in January are going to testify that they were amply warned. I mean, they, on and on. They've Trump's, already testified Trump's, to the wall. Trump's Go HHS ahead. secretary said in 2019 a coming pandemic kept him up at night. In early January, Azar tried to meet with Trump to warn him. It took two weeks to schedule a meeting, and then Trump only wanted to talk about vaping. A month later, he was still comparing it to the flu. Our, our intelligence agents, how about this? The um, predict. President Trump said no one could have predicted the coronavirus. Maybe he should not have eliminated a program literally called Predict, designed to detect coronavirus <laughs> and strongly supported by Presidents Bush and Obama. You're right, Malcolm. This is all going to come out, all of it. And this is criminal negligence. Yep. Criminal negligence. There are very, very strong cases here, okay, that the things that were said, even though they were said in government, like I said last week, the mesothelioma lawyers are all going to turn into coronavirus negligence lawyers mm -hmm. when this is over and done with. And they have their co Republican congressmen, people like our new press secretary. Uh, what's her name? Tommy Ke or Tommy? Kelly. 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 Oh, Kelly. Kelly McEnany. Don't call Who's her that? Kelly. It's Kelly. Kelly. She said Trump, I'm sure you played the cut at least 10 times today, that Trump will not allow coronavirus. Oh, oh no, let's, oh, let's listen again. Yeah, let's listen again. Absolutely. This president will always put America first. He will always protect American citizens. We will not see diseases like the coronavirus come here. Mm. We will not see terrorism come here. And isn't that refreshing mm. when contrasting it with the awful presidency of President Obama? Right. Yes. <laughs> right. Wow. Are they out of their minds? No, really. Let's speak frankly. And this is what sort of gets me with a lot of people in, who, who get the plat with the microphone on news these days. Why are you not getting outraged over this? This is a, a criminal level of stupid that's happening here. And the reason I'm all shouty McShout face is because I was trained as a Navy chief to have zero tolerance for stupid irresponsibility, for ridiculousness, for playing around, and worse, incompetence. I cannot tolerate incompetence. This incompetence is killing American and, citizens. And I think of you, Malcolm, every time, and I can't imagine how offended you are as a guy that served, whose whole family has served, when he keeps calling himself a war president, hey. and this is the invisible enemy. As I keep saying, or comparing it to Pearl Harbor or 9-11, no, this no. was a completely preventable health crisis. I, Seth Abramson, our friend, said other nations are winning their wars against coronavirus. We aren't. It's time to accept the difference between us and them as our quote-unquote leader has consistently lied about and downplay the virus, leading his fans to do the same and endanger America. So if he is a wartime president, he's a super crappy one, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I monitor a lot of the right-wing extremist websites, and my new favorite place to hang out is uh, some of, uh, you know, some of these these gun supporting websites and the the cultism there is insane it's insane they really think that everything's going great that we are really doing well and my the, the comment i see the most is you don't want liberals in charge of this well we just blew past trump's vaunted swine flu death toll we blew swine flu's death toll was over a year and a year and a half yeah. Of that thing of 12,000 people dying. We just blew through that in 60 days. Yep. This is not a joke. And, you know, Seth, I'll give Seth his props, even though he has me blocked. Uh, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. Yeah. Everyone else is winning their war. We are winning the war on gross co incompetence and horrible criminal negligence. And what we're going to have is 50 New Yorks happening yeah. one month after another yeah. for the next year and a half 
if we don't shut this nation Thank down you. for two weeks. Um, let me read a couple more. Speaking of which, um, uh, Nira Tandon said, really important article on why Germany's death rate is so low. Contact tracing, lots of testing, getting tested right uh, early, competent leadership yep. of the country. Um, it, it, again, it, it is it, you don't need an authoritarian state. You need a competent leader and people that trust that leader because they're telling the truth. I mean, it's we have the exact yeah. opposite as you. This one, just so we're clear on how Trump's handling distrib distributing PPE and ventilators. One, states are buying PPE and ventilators for themselves because they can't get them from the federal government. Two, the federal government is stopping planes on tarmacs to confiscate these shipments. I keep asking, Malcolm, what is going on? And why is no one getting to the bottom of this? Did you, well, if you saw Trump's horrible conference yesterday, which I can't take more than five minutes at a time. I know. Um, at the most. And then I go watch other people's poor Daniel Dale of the Toronto uh, uh, yeah. paper who has to watch and document every lie. You can you, you can hear the sigh. He's just like, no, people are not getting tested <laughs> when they get on and off planes. No, <laughs> Obama didn't give him a broken. But test. you're watching a phenomenal propaganda um, activity going on. You know, propaganda is defined as uh, a, 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 a deliberate mix of truth, half truth and lies in order to reach an agenda. And Donald Trump with his hydro, uh, hydro uh, hydroxychloroquine, you yeah. know, yeah. pushing that and pushing that and saying a Democratic Congress or representative wrote me and said that it saved her. You know, but he just hearing that story, it appeared that time saved her. Right. She had gone through the, the worst part of that virus. Right. But this is where the now the resigned Trump campaign needs to kick off. And here's what I'm asking your followers to do. We have to get that message up to our political leaders to say, this isn't a pass. There won't be a pass. Anytime you tweet, hashtag resign Trump. Anytime you post something on Facebook, hashtag res resign Trump. Why we cannot collectively put out there into the media that what has happened here needs to always be the number one thing on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, because accountability is important here. We are losing people. Yeah. I do also agree with one thing that I, I, I heard yesterday, which is that, look, we are in a damage control situation. The nation is sinking. OK, and we do have to now maybe for a period, put a time our put aside our partisanship and get the nation going. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to do that. But every afternoon at four o'clock, I'm confronted with a wild series of lies. Thank you. By the commander in chief, which is destroying the faith in the nation, can I which give, is splitting the nation. Yes. Can I, can I give you one last one? Speaking sure, of because we're talking more. We're talking more talk. And um, yeah. just commander in chief, as you just said, um, I, Rube Pundit, who I don't think served. I think he's just a filthy hobo blogger. He is. I've met him. He's awesome. But even he. <laughs> I kid. Like, but oh, even he right. tweeted, he's like, God, but you idiot. The Defense Production Act is not a threat. It's a promise that corporations won't make that ends up not being bought. Jesus, I'm so sick of him lying about every <laughs> thing. Because that's exactly right. Commander in Chief does the Defense Production Act. It's not a threat to a company. It's a way to be Commander in Chief and lead and, and, and right and, and get the federalize the supply chain. And well, get it, people, you, before they die. I mean, it's he's so absolutely right. And, you know, yesterday in Trump's whatever you want to call that propaganda session, he actually said this. I don't know whether you played the audio, but I'm going to repeat it. He goes, if the states don't get their acts together, I'm going to have to take charge. I'm <laughs> going to have to step in and do something. It's like, where have you been for two months? Yeah. Do you not understand what the presidency of the United States is? It's not the referee in WWE. You, it, is not, it is not the circus clown that comes out when the cowboy's being right. trampled to death. When you declare a state of emergency, you're in charge. That's what it means. He doesn't right. know and he doesn't care. Yeah. He views himself as a person who is the head of Trump USA Inc. And that all he has to do is what is beneficial to him. The hydrochloroquine, you know that there. he already has stocks in Sanofi. And that organist, and he is pushing it hard. Yeah. There needs to be not a truth and reconciliation commission, uh, which some people have called for next year. There needs to be a Trump crimes commission. Thank you. Like Glenn says. Yeah, absolutely. And if we need to call it out 
We need to match deaths yeah. to statements. And we are and, fantasizing you know, about a, a co-presidency, Gavin Newsom and uh, Andrew Cuomo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but you're right. Kamala should be VP. OK, I, I'm good with Joe and Kamala. But my point is. I, like many people, because you know you were the first man that made me go from gay to questioning, but I am now a homosexual, as uh, Randy Rome hey, you know calls what? it. Big, <laughs> I'm in New York, big fan of Cuomo, uh, you know, and you never know. You have, you have to remember something, all right? I love Joe Biden. Yeah. Big Joe Biden fan. Uh, big Kamala Harris for VP fan, because African Americans are saving this nation. And now we find out in coronavirus, they're up to 50 to 70 percent of the victims. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it, Malcolm. I don't like it. You know, there's this one lady I saved her life. I saw her talked about on Fox News. She's very articulate. This black lady I saved her life. She's a big Trump fan. She wasn't a Trump fan, Malcolm, but now she is. Now she's going to vote for Trump. Just disgraceful. Okay. I mean, every time he opens his mouth about that. But again, we are a nation. You know, and my last point, we're a nation where the nation is on fire. We are sinking slowly. OK. And what you cannot do, even with the moron in charge who is giving counter orders, um, it is time for us to pull together and understand that you have to go by my motto that sits over my shoulder and flies over my house on a flag every day. And that's this. Don't give up the ship. We are going to save this nation come November. Right now, you also have to start screaming to your representatives that they need to, in the next stimulus, do what Elizabeth Warren said. Thank you. Which is tie ball mail-in ballots. The whole nation should go to the state of Washington's me um, method and mail their ballots in this election. Thank you. And just tell them, no money for your billionaire friends without the right to vote being restored to the nation. Thank you. Otherwise, we will sink. Fire in the okay? engine, fire in the engine room. We're listening to port, but don't give up the ship. Malcolm, one more prop. Can Because I always say, don't be a pandemic, be a pandemic angel. Show what you're doing, the masks. You're bringing masks uh, to the hospital that took care of your wife who, yeah. who passed Well, for those, from for those of you who don't know or, or recall, uh, my wife passed away last September, thank God. Thank God she didn't have to live through this because she was on a ventilator for 77 days yeah. uh, to right up to her last moment. And um, they would not have given her that ventilator for a day here. And I, none of us would have been able to see her pass. So what I did was the wonderful surgical intensive care unit at the hospital of university of Pennsylvania, who I beat up on for 77 days. I was very Navy chiefly there um, who took care of my wife right to her last I am sending them 100 of these handmade hospital masks with a little memorial label to my wife, which you can't see. It says uh, Maurice. Maurice Bellevaux in memoriam. And I am sending that to them so that they can use it and give them to their families and they don't have to use, you know, surgical material. Um, so we made up 100 of those and I now have 45 other pre-made ones that I'm going to be sending to the chemo uh the chemo wards there at Penn so that Thank you. everybody who's on chemo right. can can have these little masks All right. and you should do that to your hospital yep. chemo patients people who have to come in they don't have those masks All right. they need it. Thank you chief you got a big giant brain a big giant heart we love you Cheers okay permission to uh, uh off board